Growing up during the early 2010s was probably a huge contributor to why I enjoy horror so much as an adult. I remember staying up way too late with my brother and close friends watching the scariest videos on YouTube like ghosts caught on tape, chupacabra sightings, jump scare videos, and everything in between. That time was also the golden days for horror fiction in the form of creepypastas, and man, did those have a chokehold on me. I remember listening to them for hours on YouTube and reading them on the Creepypasta website. And to top it all off, we also had some of the craziest horror games come out of that era. Games like Slender, Slendy Tubbies, the infamous Scary Maze game, the old SCP games, and a little game by the name of Spooky's House of Jump Scares. But how scary were these games? I booted up Spooky's House of Jump Scares for the first time in over a decade to find out. Spooky's House of Jump Scares, or as it's called today, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, is an indie horror game that was released on October 24th, 2014. This single player game has one simple goal, make it through a thousand rooms of Spooky's Mansion and try not to shit yourself when confronted by the horrors within. Easy enough, right? As you enter the mansion, Hello, I am Spooky. You're greeted by the one and only Spooky. And this is my home. Can you, humble player, make it through a thousand rooms? Can you find what lies at the end? Or is there even an end? Because I, I don't really know. Anyway, just, just go. Entering this first door is where we get a first taste of the mood change that pitch warping and then back to the creepy atmospheric music is a precursor for what is about to come. The first three rooms are just hallways with nothing to look at, nothing to run from, just doors at the end waiting for you to pass through. Upon entering the fourth room, you're met with nothing more than a table and what appears to be two ripped picture frames on the walls to the left and the right of you, but with no pictures. Room 5 has a bed and nightstand. These are regular occurrences throughout some of the rooms that lie ahead. Surely, this means that there are other inhabitants in the mansion, or there were at one point, but where have they all gone? Room 10 is where you're met with the first jump scare, something truly terrifying and that had me jumping out of my chair and checking my heart rate. A cute piece of toast. God damn it. I can't believe I got jump scared by a fucking piece of toast. Room 14 gives us our first note left behind by what seems to be another visitor who was given the same mission as us. The note reveals that this visitor has been stuck in the mansion for days, revealing that they are starting to get thirsty and that something is watching them. And here is where you get your first real choice. You're met with two doors and it's up to you to make the right decision if there is one. There are more rooms with furniture and empty hallways until you get to room 23. God damn it. Here, you're also met with another choice. This time, three doors in front of you. These decisions really make you think about what door you are going to go through because you don't know what can lie ahead. In room 26, you start to hear what sounds like something scurrying in the adjacent rooms. Room 36 gives us another note. I know something is following me, but I feel like I am prancing through the same rooms over and over. Hopefully, leaving notes as breadcrumbs will prove I am making progress and reaching some destination. I just hope I don't run out of ink. I'm dreadfully thirsty. Here we can see that the person who came before us has had some sort of encounter with something at this point, and it makes us wonder if we're close to experiencing that same horror. Here we also read that they have been drinking the ink they are using to write these notes in an attempt to curb their thirst. Just a quick side note, if you are ever thirsty, please don't, please don't drink ink. Room 46 has another frame on the wall, but this time we get an actual painting. It appears to be something or someone trapped in a cage. Could this be what awaits at the end? Has the person before us been captured and now we're getting a glimpse at what our future holds? Just a few rooms later in room 49 and we get another picture, this time of a house on fire. Still, there's not much context for these images 
and what they represent, at least not this early on. And then we arrive, room 50. This is the game's equivalent to a save room that you would find in other games like Resident Evil, but we aren't welcomed with soothing music to let us know that we're safe, just silence. A motivational poster that tells us we're still far from the end. And another note. You get a cross as your saving mechanism, and this is where you can decide. Do you want to call it good for now? Or do you want to find out what lies in the thousandth room? And the journey continues. Right away, this little guy gets me again. And then in the other room, right after, I get got by an ice cream cone. This one makes sense. I'm lactose intolerant, so. Room 60 is where things start to get a little spooky. We come in and are immediately faced with what looks like ectoplasm. There was something here recently, but is it still near or can it be hundreds of rooms ahead by now? The note in this room is more of a riddle than anything else. Spouting, splashing, soaking, innards, ingest, invoking, nailing, never stops the choking. And it looks like the thing responsible was in fact not hundreds of rooms away. I also don't know why, but in my running for my life, I got stuck a couple of times when entering the next room and I physically had to turn around and face the door before I could get unstuck. Not sure if this was on purpose, but it definitely made the anxiety worse. I could not keep my stamina from draining running through the following rooms. My finger was glued to that shift key. The sounds that the creature was making added to the threat of its appearance and it reminded me of another chase scene that haunted me as a kid and still does to this day. It's from Spider-Man on the Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1 when you're running from Monster Ock at the end. If you've ever played this, you know the dread that goes into finishing that level. The closest the thing had gotten to me at this point was room 69 where I got stuck again and it got a good scratch on me. And then another hit in room 70 where they make you traverse this maze while you're having a heart attack. So you inevitably choose the wrong way to go and then have to backtrack toward where the killer is coming from. Ah, keep going, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. I fucked up. By room 79, I think we're in the clear. I'm not 100% sure, so I skip another fine work of art because I'm just extremely in survival mode now. I don't know why, but for the next few rooms, we get this banger soundtrack that kind of eases the tension a bit. Room 84 brings another note in which the person running through the home ahead of us writes about how they find a bottle of wine that tastes like metal. The spider comes back at room 85, really kicking me while I'm down, and I mean at this point they could flash the words boo on the screen and I'd probably jump. Room 86 brings us to this brightly lit area. This room feels out of place compared to the rest of the mansion so far, and upon making your way through the first opening, you're met with three options through which you can pass. But unlike the doors prior, there is only one right entry to the next room this time. This part of the game plays out like the Lost Woods in the Zelda series, as you have to make your way through the right combination of passageways before you get to the end. If you mess up even once, you have to start from the beginning. There are little audio cues that let you know when you've made the right choice and when you haven't. You finally get to the door, and that's the end of that, until you get to room 90, and then you have to do it again. When you get to room 93, you're met with another homage to a popular Nintendo game, this time a long, endless hallway reminiscent of the infamous staircase in Super Mario 64. You can walk forward all you want, but as far as I know, there's no speedrunning glitch in this game that would help you beat the game mechanic. No, here you are forced to turn around, defeated, and make your way through the door on the side. Room 95 is rather ominous, two doors on each side and three machines in the middle. The one right in front of you is lit up in red and it's blatantly obvious it wants you to interact with it. You log onto the computer and you see this, a menacing menu screen, complete with unnerving music and an uwu face to really portray the danger that you've put yourself in by choosing to go through the mansion. Two options, enter 
or exit program. Your curiosity has brought you this far, so why stop now? Choosing to hit enter brings you to two more options apart from the recurring back option, access specimen database or modify house layout. What is the purpose of this computer and these options? Who is this made for and were we even meant to get this far? These seem to be like things an admin should have access to, hidden deep within the mansion and out of reach, guarded by whatever creature was supposed to have ended you before you reached this point. Accessing the specimen data brings up six specimen files you can look at. Specimen 1 is the little ghost cutout you encounter at the beginning of the game, and upon reading up on him, you see that it's a docile type specimen, which has only killed four people via heart attack, and is quote, not very effective against healthy subjects. Looks like we, and our friend, might be guinea pigs for an experiment on what creatures are most effective at wiping out humans. Specimen 2 is what chased us through the mansion up until now. And we can see that this thing has claimed 137 lives and is most effective against slower subjects. These two specimens are the only ones we have faced so far, so looking through the next four is more of a warning to what we can expect going forward. And I don't know if that's better or worse than not knowing. Specimen 3 appears to be an arachnid of some sort, but it's kind of hard to tell for sure through this image. This specimen is still in development, according to the file, but it has been tested seeing as it has used its infectious bite to claim 43 victims. Specimen 4 is probably one that most people would agree is scarier than the others based on its human-like appearance and physical relation to creatures and spirits like the Grudge and Samara. This is a 14th century spirit that has been relocated to the home, but surely this can't be spooky, right? Specimen 5 resembles a Slenderman-like creature, and this thing was found in a small town church, according to the files. No one seems to know how this specimen kills, but it had one of the highest victim counts out of all of the specimens, and it seems to prey on those with mental health issues. Finally, we arrive at specimen 6, and we're met with this. An error. What can these files be hiding that is so horrible? Or worse, does someone know that we've been going through these specimens and doesn't want us spoiling the surprise? Exiting the specimen files and attempting to access the modify house layout menu gives us another error. Someone definitely knows we've been snooping around. And it's this realization that makes you not want to exit the program because at this point, you never know if someone is waiting for you to turn around. Lucky for us, the only thing waiting for us is Room 95's silence. Room 98 once again has a set of computers, but for the most part, it's all the same information. And here we are, Room 100, another cute cat poster to remind us that, no, the journey is not over, it has only begun. This next note is short and not so sweet. Yeah, you don't say. And so we continue our journey. Room 101 introduces these slab-like walls and some wooden bridges that you have to traverse, as well as some above. One can only wonder what creatures are using those to spy on us. Room 104 has some arcade machines we can play on. Finally, somewhat of a break. This first game is a Pac-Man-like game, and I'm not too sure that I was playing it right because I could not get my little guy to go straight. Not sure if this is just how the game plays or if it's a skill issue. I guess you win when you eat spooky, but the only reward is you getting impaled, so there's that. This feels like foreshadowing to me, something that tells us that we aren't meant to win the mansion. I'm not sure if I can show the next game on YouTube. It's pretty unhinged and I believe it's just meant to show us Spooky's vengeful nature. Okay, those are pretty much the only two games that we can play right now, so... Let's move on. Room 113 has these cells, and I was half expecting something to bust out of one or to find something in one, but looks like they're just for show, at least for now. I was checking out some of the paintings along the way because they were pretty creepy, but again, I'm not sure these had anything to do with the game other than just setting up the atmosphere. Room 120 sees a change in the walls. I'm not sure how to describe this, so sorry. The doors also change and we get a more industrial look, I guess you can say. Going through the only unlocked door brings you to a room that houses specimens, or at least ones that are in development. As you walk a bit more, you can see that one of them has broken out, which is totally not terrifying. In the main room here, you come across some blood on the floor. Suddenly, 
Spookies isn't so cutesy anymore. You also come across a key card and another note, but this one seems to be from one of the lab assistants. The note tells you that Specimen 5 has broken loose because Spooky couldn't be bothered to provide the team with more sedatives. It feels like Spooky doesn't care much for her staff, which once again reveals her affinity for murder. We come across another note upon unlocking the other door, but it again just talks about Specimen 5 breaking loose. You can even hear it crawling around the ceilings, and this is probably one of the more unnerving specimens in terms of sound alone. Oh god. Oh god. It doesn't help that upon entering room 121, you see holes in the ceiling, and they kind of just go for a while, so it has you on edge, not knowing when it will drop down and start chasing you. So naturally, I start running through the rooms as quickly as I can, trying my best not to miss any notes or any other important items. Room 135 has these weird pools filled with who knows what, and then, surprise surprise, another specimen one jump scare. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I wish I could tell you that I just got used to them, but I... I didn't. <sighs> Room 139 has another computer unit, but there's not really anything new for us to look at, and we still can't access the layout editor. Ah, <sighs> sweet, sweet safety. Time to check up on our old friend here, as it appears they've left another note. I don't know how much longer I can go on. I haven't seen any of my previous notes. So that means either I'm getting somewhere, or someone is taking them. This makes you think that are they, and in turn you, making any progress toward exiting this mansion? Or are the two of you just stuck in an endless loop? Another little change in scenery entering room 151, and specimen 1 just casually making me shit myself again. You come across this desk with a functioning phone, but it looks like the phone is missing, and you're just meant to listen. Okay, someone's definitely watching us. I stuck around for a bit to see if they had anything new to say, but the audio seemed to just repeat. When you reach room 161, you get this, which resembles those maps that you would see in shopping malls that show you where you're at. But this one is just a series of shifting rooms. It seems this mansion is more intricate than we thought. Not only does it have different themed rooms, but they're constantly shifting around. So in theory, it's quite possible that you are indeed going in a loop. This makes more sense now as to why there's an option on the computers to edit the layout. I just wish that we could actually use it. Room 161 is where things start to get worse. You enter a school themed section and I immediately check to see if you could hide in the lockers because if that's an option then you know you're pretty much screwed. You get some notes and writing on the boards but it was all in Japanese so I couldn't read it. But if you happen to know what it says you can drop it in the comments below. I entered another one of the classrooms and shining my flashlight toward the back revealed some shadows, probably lost souls that have fallen victim to Spooky. I got too close to one of the shadows and oh, took God. some damage, which naturally caused me to panic, but I'll be damned if I miss any notes. Matsui has to be the specimen, and it looks like she eats her victims, and it looks like she's right behind me. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, fuck. Oh, why does it get stuck like that? Fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> I kept getting stuck entering these rooms again, so if you see me doing a little flick here, that's why. I also have to say that the music that was playing as Matsui was chasing me made the situation 100 times worse for some reason. I pretty much just ran through these rooms here, to be honest, and I think she stopped chasing me at around room 175. <sighs> The rest of the rooms leading up to 200 were pretty standard, and we get our next note in room 182. It seems like our friend is beginning to give up, and they state that this is their final note. They seem to be at peace, even saying that this place was an escape for them. In room 192, we are blinded by light, and we see some portraits on the wall. I'm not too sure who these people are, most likely people who worked on the game or test played it back in the day. And as we enter the next major checkpoint, room 200, we find this. Is this who was leaving behind those notes? Can I take their sweet hat? One thing's for sure. It looks like that last note was in fact 
the last one they wrote. As with the other sections, room 201 gives us a new level aesthetic with these bland, beigey walls. It's a bit sterile and a little unnerving. In room 204, we're surprised with another note. But wait, I thought our friend was dead. Room 207 has these tanks, I think, and one of them seems to be missing. So it's safe to assume that something broke out of it. Room 210 was pretty unnerving. It was dark and grim, and everything felt grainy. The sound your footsteps make here adds to the atmosphere, and the door leading up to the next room is uninviting to say the least. Some of the doors are broken and can't be opened, but the rooms you can access have more notes in them. There's also this one sub room that has what looks like a person preserved and tucked behind bars. Kinda reminds me of Han Solo and Carbonite. Also, I wonder why this door is behind bars. The next sub room messed with my eyes a bit. You can barely see anything and it's even more grainy than when we first entered, but it was nothing compared to this. What the hell? And then not even a minute later, this thing is unleashed. Oh, hell no. Yeah, I wish I could show you what it looked like, but I booked it. Oh, oh shit! And oh boy, what better way to add to the stress than with the maze. But wait, there is more. Let's add faces to it. Oh, here, look, you can actually catch a glimpse here before I look away like a coward. These constant effects made running away hard, by the way. Oh, and I also started getting stuck again, so I had to do my quick little tricks here. No! No! Room 233 is when you finally get some peace. For now. <sighs> I know that I'm most likely safe right now, but I can't tell you the mini heart attack I get when I go the wrong way on these mazes. And in room 250, we get to catch up with Spooky again. She doesn't seem too happy about that. This picture goes hard, I'm not gonna lie. Very funny, Spooky. Fuck you, Spooky. I wrote this down just in case, but spoiler alert, there are two other ones and I never use them for anything. I'm sure they have a purpose, but let me know in the comments if you know what they're for. Some more, uh, nice paintings. And we can finally see what Specimen 6 is. And it was eerily familiar. Oh look, a Metroid. When we get to room 272, we get another note. This note describes the computer we've been seeing thus far, and how they hope they're not a side character. Yeah, sorry buddy. Room 272 is a weird repeating room, and about the fourth time walking through, we get a new note. And the next time, we can finally open the door. We get to do it all over. In room 282, same premise, same note, but this time, we get this. Oh no, please. Ah! I continued my journey, even though I really didn't want to at this point. In room 294, there's another note with some not so helpful information and some horny posting on the main. Room 298 triggers the chase with the slimy ghost specimen. And no, I didn't look, but I could tell by the sound, okay? We get to the next main checkpoint, room 300, and we get another note. There's a great contrast here between that motivational poster and this disheartening note.
the first set of rooms starting at room 300 are nothing too different from what we've already seen, not until we get to room 310. What does this room remind you of? This room has a few notes about the strange merchant, notes that tell us his story. One day, a strange merchant came to town. He sold handmade puppets and trinkets, and all the children loved his store and his gifts, but the town couldn't support his store because the other shops were failing. The other shopkeepers became jealous, so one night, some of the townspeople took all his puppets and threw them in the river. But just afterwards, he came running to the river, crying and wailing that his children were being drowned. He dove into the river trying to save his possessions. The townspeople, bitter and still angry, watched him frantically thrash and dive into the river until he never came back to the surface of the water. There's also a key here. This next room has another key in albeit a rather unsettling place and another couple of notes. It looks like this is the right way as much as I don't want to go in. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think we just have to stare at him. Ah! Fuck! No, 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 no! This next bit sucked because I wanted to run through the rooms like I did with the previous specimens, but I knew that I had to keep an eye on this one so that it wouldn't kill me. I could hear its puppet-like clattering behind me, and in room 315, the thing jump scares me. I think we just have to stare at him. Room 327 has an oddly placed pile of bones, and our friend blocks our path to the next room. This chase was pretty tense, and it seemed like it lasted so much longer than most of the other ones. He finally gave up at room 334, but that didn't stop me from sprinting through the other rooms. I eventually slowed back down, and as with the other levels, not much happened after the initial chase. Room 365 just gives us another Lost Woods-like level. Room 368 has this phone again, but it doesn't seem to be anything new, just a recycling of the previous times it's appeared. Still, I stood around for a bit, just to make sure. In room 369, we get another note from our friend, and it doesn't seem like they're doing too hot. I'm starting to get real tired of this stupid little ghost. We get another note in room 389, not much more than an update on their deteriorating sanity. Oh god, there's that horrible crawling noise again. Well that was a horrible way to end the section, but let's see what this note says. Day 5. I can't remember. Why did I come here? Was there ever a purpose? I believe death is steadily approaching me now. The hallucinations can hurt me. I'm out of provisions, and I'm having sudden violent heart palpitations. Oh boy. Yikes. As I continued to write out the script, I started to realize that the sections kept getting shorter, and I think that's in part because the rooms started to get a bit repetitive. While the hundred room sections do add some suspense, I feel like... Already at the halfway mark, I've seen most of the room designs, barring the special ones made specifically for the specimens. But let's keep going and see what else awaits us in the mansion. Room 408 has this weird window, but I can't see anything of interest behind it. Okay, this looks promising. Like I'm about to cry. We come across this line on the ground that reads threshold of consciousness and a clock in the center of the room. And when we cross this line, a cat appears. Oh, hello there. Are you lost, little one? But as we've learned, you can't trust anything here, so no pets for you. Like the previous specimen themed rooms, we have multiple sub rooms that we can enter here. The first one made me a little sick, and the cat is here again, but what's the purpose of this room, if there even is one? Okay, let's check out a different room. Yeah, this one looks good. And we're met with nothing. Nothing but the same cat with its menacing stare. Do I turn around? Oh, actually, looks like there is something here. 
a door. Oh, this is nice. When we get to the end of this fleshy tunnel, a red tint covers the screen and we get this weird James Bond-like music and some weird symbols on the walls that I have no idea what they could mean. But for some reason, they killed me. And it was after this that I, being a dummy, didn't realize that there had been a next page all along on the computers. And when I finally realized this during editing, I found that the symbols were actually a specimen and you're not supposed to look at it. So yeah, let's have another go. Fortunately, I didn't get too far in this section. So restarting in room 400 wasn't too bad. But do keep that in mind if you play this. Try not to die in further rooms if you don't get a checkpoint at the halfway mark in each section. So anyway, I started running. I tried so hard not to look at any of the walls, which was hard because the specimen liked to move around a lot. Room 428 only gets worse. And we get what I think are windows that make navigating the room a little more nauseating. We finally escape the specimen in room 429, and I assume that it's smooth sailing from here, like in the previous sections. Maybe. Yeah, I spoke too soon. I swear I heard the spider-like specimen, but it didn't seem to actually be chasing me. Another note awaits for us in room 453. I can't tell the real from the unreal anymore. My limbs refuse to move the way I want them to. I feel like I'm wading in a deep river that is always flowing against my direction. Now, I will lay down and let the river flow over me. I will let it guide me to its end. I know where I'm going anyway. This place, this entire place is just a gyrating screaming rock in the vastness of an infinite kingdom. I'm going to rest now. I'll be watching over you. And I really hope they are because we still have quite a ways to go. Not much happened until I got to room 474 at which I was being stalked by the creepy crawly specimen. Oh, there's the clacking again. Yeah, no. No, 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 I'm good, man. Fuck. Fuck! Fuck! I took the dead end at this maze and was met face to face with the thing and with no other option other than to run through and hope it didn't immediately kill me. Luckily, it only did a chunk of damage. And by room 481, it gave up its pursuit, at least for now. We reconvene with Spooky in room 500. Well, here you are, alive and still here. You just keep on going, don't you? Well, the next door has been fixed up for you. So enjoy and keep moving on, you little fleshy live one. Again, she doesn't seem very pleased. And it looks like she wants us to know that, seeing as how she most likely blocked off the exit for us. So, I guess we have no other choice than to use her door. It looks like after room 501, their room numbers kind of glitch out, so I lost my sense of progress for a time. But hey, this section gives us a new arcade game to play. It's called Spooky Cart, and once again, it's just a homicidal fantasy created by Spooky herself, it seems. The music kind of bangs though. All right, let's keep moving. Room 60, I don't know what the real number is to be honest, has some more ectoplasm, so I think you can guess what's coming next. Oh, just kidding. I guess there's something I missed. Ah, the express tunnel from the note. This should be the way. It looks like the room numbers are fixed and just in time for Mr. Ghost to give us a good chase. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, I know what that is. It never gets old. The ghost thing comes back again, so I don't think we're getting a new specimen in this section. God damn it, I'm pretty sure there was a note. But I'm not 100% sure because room 550, rather than being a checkpoint, is this weird room that appears to be outdoors. And then room 551 is a cabin themed room with another note. For a while, I thought I had really escaped this place, but Despite the trees and flora, I think this is actually just another room. I did, however, find deer, so I might at least get to eat. They make some strange sounds, though. I mean, they look perfectly fine to me. I don't know what they are, but those are definitely not deer. I tried sneaking up on one the other day to kill it for food, but it saw me as soon as I got close. 
I was barely able to get away from the thing. I've managed to board up most of them. Hopefully, I can find another way out of here. But like I said, don't trust anything in this place. In room 554, we get access to an axe, which is great, but that also means that the game is giving it to us for a reason. Hopefully, it's just for cutting off these boards. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go around. Oh god, that's definitely not a deer. Room 557 seems to have more subrooms, and I feel like this is where we'll meet the next specimen. But for now, let's check out the rooms. This one has a blue key, and still no sign of any threats. However, the fact that the sound cut off as I entered this room wasn't a great sign. So let's turn on some music. This is an absolute banger. Oh. I guess whatever is here didn't like it very much. Oh, yep, there it is. No, 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 no. This specimen was one of the worst purely because of the screen filter and the sounds it made, along with the eerie, low quality music. Room 581, and we are safe. But you can never be too careful, even if we're about 20 rooms from the next section. But I guess there's nothing to worry about at the moment. Hmm. No note. Oh. Didn't see you there. I was just checking out this cool poster here. Okay. Let's see what rooms 601 through 700 have in store for us. There's nothing too special until we get to room 610. Here, we enter this dark room with metal flooring, walls, and doors. Good thing we have this flashlight that I don't remember picking up. The notes in this section are replaced by holograms. This old place is somehow even worse than the new GL labs. Although it seems to have been constructed with a much larger budget than the new lab, nothing works quite right. I could see why it was abandoned so quickly. I wonder if there really is anything worth salvaging. It seems as though this may have been an experiment gone wrong that GL labs and Spooky wanted to erase from their records. But why? Upon activating this machine, the lights come on, and we can now access these high-tech looking doors. This facility is quite odd. Some of the equipment doesn't seem quite right, almost as if it were designed for people without hands. Also, I'm not sure if it's just the faulty electronics, but the power keeps fluctuating, and weird noises are coming from the ducts. Well, it's a good thing we don't have to crawl through any of those, right? Yeah, I figured. Oh, it looks like maybe Spooky didn't want this thing erased. Let's crawl through more vents, I guess. Mm, I don't like that. Why am I still playing this? I don't know what to do. I can't think well. I feel strange. I'm hiding from that thing. I feel like something is growing on my skin. I can't seem to tear it off fast enough. And I'm losing a lot of blood. You have to keep it close. It becomes something else when it gets too far away. Something I can't outrun. And you'd think, oh. That's a pretty obvious hint. Well, not if you're me. As soon as I saw the thing, I did what I do best. I ran. And what do you know? The specimen killed me with its weird mind control powers or whatever. And it killed me a lot. I retried this section a good handful of times before I convinced myself that the bug that made it so that I got stuck while entering a new room was the reason I was dying and not because I couldn't follow a simple hint. I literally almost gave up and was going to cut the video short, but I decided to look up a video and wouldn't you know, you have to keep it close. This chase lasted forever and it was pretty unnerving having to make sure you had this thing in sight and right behind you. It was especially hard to look at when it opened its mouth or what is supposed to be its mouth. The bug that caused me to get stuck did make it a bit annoying because you do need to maintain some distance to avoid taking damage. But lo and behold, it wasn't the reason I kept dying the first time. Eventually, you kind of get used to this specimen, and the threatening feeling goes away, instead being replaced by a bit of impatience. Come on, little guy, I got places to be. Room 638 is where it finally stops pursuing you, and I needed a quick break after that. There wasn't too much that happened in between here and the end of the section for the most part. Having this axe handy was great for taking care of a specimen one. I finally found the obvious next page button on the computer, and this is where we find information on the next set of specimens. 7. The wall paintings that drove us insane. 8. 
the deer creature that likes to listen to its music on vinyl. Nine, or what is supposed to be nine, which we haven't run into because it was supposedly destroyed by GL Labs for being too dangerous. Ten, a docile specimen that was apparently kept as a pet until GL Labs was abandoned, but it looks a lot like what we saw this last specimen hatch from, so that's probably why this particular one isn't on the list. And specimen 10, a demonic looking creature that was found in some sort of underground restaurant and can leave the mansion at will. So that's something to look forward to, I guess. Room 677 triggered the ghost girl from one of the earlier sections for over 10 rooms and was draining the hell out of my stamina, which didn't help the anxiety. But from room 688 until 700, it was smooth sailing. This section didn't really start until room 710, where we entered the fabled underground restaurant mentioned in the previous GL notes. They seem to be proud of the fact that they use 100% beef. The men's bathroom is locked for now, but in the women's, we find a key next to this locked, bloodied stall and a numbered note. Well, I broke my one rule today. The management doesn't actually give lunch breaks, so I can't go anywhere, and they won't allow outside food here. I mean, they actually screamed at the last customer who did that. Anyway, I had a burger, it wasn't bad, and I don't feel sick, so I might get a few every now and then. I mean, I'd hope not, they're 100% beef. Note number two can be found in the manager's office. Today was a weird day. The average number of orders continues to rise as it has been, but I don't know about the number of people. Today, I saw someone use the drive through and order a lot of food for one person, and then about 10 minutes later, they were back. They ordered the exact same meals, and then they left again. Then, after another 10 minutes, they were back again. Maybe they're just delivering food for a party or hotel, but it worries me for some reason. It seems like the locals really like this place. Does this bring back memories? It looks like the next note takes us to this play place. Too bad I'm not tall enough to go in, but maybe that's a good thing. All right, unfortunately we don't get a choice, so in we go. And here we come across note number five. There was a horrible accident today. At least, that's what the managers are calling it. One of the other employees brought in some outside food and got into a fight with the manager about it. The employee said that the burgers here smell like sulfur. I then watched the manager grab the kid's neck and shove his head onto the grill. The employee got up and ran out before anyone could do anything, and I'm told that he is fine. But that really shook me today. A bit of an overreaction if you ask me, but hey, I've also never managed a restaurant, so what do I know? Let's see what else is in here. I don't remember the play places I played in having this. Eventually, we find another key, and I will now read note number four, which I didn't see on our way into the play place. This is strange. I had a dream last night about this restaurant. I know I was here, but I also felt like I was in another place at the same time. Everything looks so wrong. Nothing was the right size, and I kept hearing these strange animal noises, almost like wailing. I guess I just feel guilty for eating that burger the other day. Also, today, I saw that man again, the one who kept ordering every 10 minutes. This time, he never left the parking lot. He just got his meal, parked, and then got back in line. He must have had done it at least 8 times before he left. By the way, sorry I didn't read these in order, uh, that's just the way I found them. With the key we found. We unlock this walk-in fridge and get access to another key. And when this music starts playing, I already know what we're about to come face to face with. Oh shit! Here we go again. Oh, did I mention that for some reason the doors in the subsequent rooms were invisible? Cause they were and that was so fun. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I fully panicked for a while before I cut onto this. I was so low on health and stamina which made this pursuit that much worse and I kept having to do my little flick move to get myself unstuck after every room. Luckily, this specimen left us alone after room 726. Holy shit, that fucking sucked. And so continued our journey through the filler rooms. There was a note in room 749 but it was blank. Oh, hi spooky. Oh. Well, that was 
generous of her. Except no, it wasn't because while we have unlimited stamina, we can't even use it because now sprinting is disabled. Let's hope nothing starts chasing us. We finally get back the ability to sprint at room 766, but our unlimited stamina is no longer available. Thanks, spooky. And this guy's back. He ended up killing me entering room 775, probably because I was being impatient and didn't stop to look at him as he was chasing me. So we get this disturbing little cutscene. Our second run through this section triggered a different specimen, our old friend Deer Guy, that's what I'm gonna call him. And he was easier to survive since all you have to do is outrun him while he tries to recruit you into his indie folk band. We are getting so close. This next section was probably my favorite. After getting through the initial repeated rooms, we come to room 810. According to the game wiki, what you see right here in front of us is just a specimen. And this specimen houses a subspecimen. And that specimen, just kidding, it's, it's just a two. Before we start exploring, we should read this note. What is this? Wow, what a mansion inside another mansion. Maybe I've made it all the way to the end of the house. Maybe this is like a resting place or another entrance, perhaps. Whatever the case, I think this is a good spot to rest. The kitchen holds another note. This mansion is strange. I think the bricks and wood are actually just painted on. Everything still feels kind of fake. Also, I keep hearing movement and voices below me. Maybe other survivors are hiding down there. Yeah, let's hope. I spent some time just going through the various doors, getting lost in the atmosphere. Oh, okay, mostly just getting lost. There is a bedroom key in the kitchen, which leads us upstairs. You guys know that cracked wardrobe sketch me out. I somehow managed to get away, but I don't know for how long I hear him, even when I know he's not there. It's like he isn't even real, but instead my own fears manifesting themselves and stalking me. I have a feeling I know what to do next. And there he is, the subspecimen simply known as the old man. He doesn't actively chase you for a majority of the room. Rather, he's triggered through certain events that advance the game. Here, he drops a key that we then use to unlock the library, which leads us to another key and a hint to opening the super secret entrance. Obviously, we are meant to find a book, so I continue to make my way through doors until I get to this cellar and I find another note on the ground. I can hear him coming down the hallway. I need to hide, but I don't know where. I now know this is not an exit or a resting place. It is just another specimen room. I think he's outside the door now. Like I said, he doesn't activate when you think he would, and you have to trigger the old man. I struggled to hide in the obvious places here, so I wandered around the house for a, a while until I got frustrated because I couldn't figure out what to do next, so I stepped away for a bit. Sometimes that's all you need because when I came back, I found a new door that I somehow missed. This room houses a piano and the book we need to unlock the secret area. But first, we have to hide and trigger the old man. Okay, we got the book. So let's just hope I remember where to go next. Too easy. The bookshelf opens up and we enter this underground tunnel network with even more doors. Eventually, we get to this dead end and find what seems to be the final key and our way out of this place. We hide from the old man again and wait for him to pass. Alright, let's get out of here. There's a pretty jarring close encounter with the old man here, so I booked it out as fast as I could, especially because from what I've read about him, he's a one-shot kill. Luckily, he also seems to be the slowest specimen. The final door we have to unlock is in the kitchen, and this leads us out of the specimen 
and back to familiar territory. I was getting stuck again so I could tell the old man was still following us. That and I could hear him opening doors behind me. We ditch him at room 829 and again we just have to go through some empty rooms. In room 852 we had to run from our old ghost friend for a bit but we quickly outrun him because I can't remember when he stopped chasing us. Room 870 came back to haunt me with this jump scare and at this point it's already gotten me so it should be no problem right? But I still jumped. Room 885 has a computer and we get access to two new specimen profiles, the mansion and what awaits us in the next section, specimen 13 which appears to be a siren. The old man's music begins playing again in room 891 but I left his ass in the dust. And now it's time for us to head into the final section. We ease into the final section with the same old room layout until we get to room 909 where we're introduced to something a little new. This is probably the quickest we've gotten a change of scenery with room 910 being dark and grimy. 910 continues through the next door and we're met with the sound of running water and a note. More whales are being shipped to the facility tomorrow, one for a health inspection and two that are already dead for autopsies. More and more beached whales keep appearing around those islands and I still can't find what is causing it. Okay, we have to find a way to drain our path so we have some exploring to do. In one of the sub rooms is another research report. Whale 814D has strange small bite marks. They appear to be from another small mammal, but the strangest thing about them is their placement. They are in even rows inside the whale's stomach, all about 5 feet from the bottom of the stomach lining. We also get a lantern, so that should help make things easier. Another room holds an excerpt. Nothing too important, but something that tells us this person has met with the specimen. The number at the top could come in handy, so I wrote it down. In this room, we get another report. Whale 015D has died much sooner than I expected while I was away on holiday. I regret not being here, but I had estimated it would live much longer. The team that did the autopsy said nothing seemed to be wrong with the lungs, but the stomach had a circular hole about two feet in diameter all the way through to the outside of the whale. This pretty much confirms a parasite is the cause of death. I believe that this is a different whale from the one mentioned in the research report because this one appears to be very much alive. I get out my handy dandy note with the code I wrote down earlier and open this door, which gives us another key. The key gives us access to the water pump control and we can finally progress. We are still in room 910 at this point and for some reason this note has survived just floating in the water. All the staff is gone, only I remain. For no purpose, I remain here, resisting the call from behind the sealed door. But I will remain as long as I can. Don't open that door. We're gonna open that door, but we need a key first. Okay, now we're gonna open that door. It's eerily quiet and there's not much, just more broken doors, more crates and the specimen. I tried sneaking past it, but it doesn't appear like we can get through this door. But do I really want to go near that thing? Do I have a choice? What's the worst that can happen? Okay, at this point, I had to look up what I was supposed to do because while I figured out that you can stand on top of the crates to avoid being killed, it wasn't clear how I was supposed to go to the next room. It turns out you have to trigger the chase, which then unlocks the door. What follows is a stress-inducing chase through about 30 rooms where you have to run from crate to crate until you reach the door. I ended up dying in room 921 because I panicked a bit, but at least I knew what to do now. The specimen stopped chasing us around room 938, and this had to be one of the longest pursuits right up there with the specimen from the abandoned geo lab. Room 962 triggers the deer specimen again, probably the most common appearance from a specimen we've seen all game, and it goes until room 978. We get the elevator early this section, with it making an appearance in room 
995. What could be so special about rooms 996 through 999? It looks like it was just to build suspense, like a majority of the rooms. And here we are, room 999. Take one last look, because what lies behind this door should be the end. Okay, this is the door for real. The exit. It's finally over. With a chop of our axe, we cut the chains holding our escape shut. Freedom. It's beautiful. I'd almost forgotten what the outside world looked like. No, not another door. Where are we? The final test is the showdown against the forbidden specimen, the one that was thought to be destroyed. This boss battle functions similar to how you would fight Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time, but there is actually a moveset variety with the specimen spawning minions, impairing your vision with blood and summoning these pillars. It's not a long fight, but it was pretty fun. Okay, and now we have to take him down, this creature that is holding us here, captive and hope that we're not too late to save our friend. We did it. Now, are we finally free? Well, kind of. Well, you died. In a pretty tragic way, too. Just tragic enough for you to become a ghost. Good job, by the way, making it this far. So buckle up, soldier, because now, I finally think we have enough troops to invade. Time has come, my loyal troops. No longer shall we be called cute or adorable. No longer will we be disregarded and ignored. For now, we are the most feared army in the world. 
So, is Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion actually scary? Well, I thought so, for the most part. But I guess it depends on what your tolerance level is for these kinds of things. If you're sensitive to jump scares, sounds, and stalking, it will definitely make you jump a few times, and some environments will give you the creeps. While I don't think it needed to be a thousand rooms, and there were quite a bit of rooms that repeated with not much going on, the encounters with the specimens were pretty unique and did genuinely scare me. Nostalgic or not, I think it's a well-made game, and most who have played it agree. It looks like Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion does stand the test of time. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to stick around. I'd love to have you on the channel. Also, feel free to check out my other videos. I think you'll enjoy them. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys in the next one.